Jetpack Compose provides many customizable APIs for creating path animations. In this video, we will learn how to draw a path, apply path effects, and animate any object along it. Let's start with defining the path. Once we have created a path object using the constructor, we can call a number of functions to determine our path. First function to learn is the moveTo function. Imagine our screen is a piece of paper and we are drawing on it with a pencil. To draw something, we would have to first lift our pencil off the paper and move it to the desired location. This is what the moveTo function does. Then, we can use the lineTo function to draw a line by giving it an x and y position. When we don't have an exact next position, but we want a line that moves a certain distance from the last position, we can use relative line2 function and give it the distance in the x and y axes. If we are drawing a closed shape, we can call the close function, which will automatically draw a line back to the beginning. After creating the path, we can now draw it on our canvas using the draw path function. In it, we give it our path, then a color or a gradient. We have two choices for the style. The default is filled, which gives us this solid shape. But we can also use stroke to get a line drawn along our path. In the stroke constructor, we can control the thickness of the line or if we want the caps and joints to be rounded or not. We can also add path effects here, but we will explore that in the next section. Now we can draw straight lines, but what if we want a curved one? For that, we can use the quadratic2 and cubic2 functions. These functions work by using the control points we give it to create a curved line. Quadratic2 takes in one control point, x1, y1, and finishes at the last point, x2, y2, whereas cubic2 takes two control points, x1, y1, x2, y2, and finishes at the last point, x3, y3. Other than these functions, we have lots more available to create the path we want. But what if we want to take this a little further? We can create Kotlin extension functions on the provided path object to extend its functionality. For example, we can define our paths in a totally different coordinate system. So far, we have used the Cartesian coordinate system, where we define our points in an x-y plane. We can switch to polar coordinates, which define points by an angle and a radius. In this system, we can define a point as 60 degrees from the baseline, with a length of 50 from the origin. In Cartesian coordinate system, we would have needed a very accurate floating point number to describe this exact position. As you can see, this will come in handy when describing lines that have defined distances and angles. To use this system, we can make a polar line 2 extension function where we can define a degree and distance. We can also add the origin as a parameter so that we can change it based on what we would like to achieve. We can also make a relative polar line 2 extension function which gets the next point by taking into account the last position and angle. First use case is drawing perfect shapes. With this, we can easily draw a triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, and so on. Or we can draw other interesting shapes like stars. If you're familiar with composed libraries, you might know that they already provide a shape library that you could create shapes with. The benefit of defining it ourselves is that you have full control to tweak the path however you want. You could recreate a geometry diagram with accurate lengths and angles. Or we can move away from closed shapes and create a spiral path by steadily increasing the length of each side of a shape and also increasing the number of sides. Then we can draw a spiral path in any shape we want. We could also draw a spiral path but with a moving origin to create a spring. The options are endless with this. To save on time, let's move on to the next section. As mentioned earlier, 
when we draw a path using the stroke style, we can add a path effect in the constructor. We have three path effects available in the Compose APIs. Uh, uh, actually, there are four of them, but the last one is only used to combine the first three. These are corner path effect, stamped path effect, dash path effect, and chain path effect. The first and the simplest of them all is the corner path effect. This takes the joints of your path and applies a smooth corner radius. This can be used to quickly smooth out a rigid path without getting into the quadratic and cubic functions from earlier. Second, we have the stamped path effect. Given a target path and a shape, this effect will stamp the shape all along the target path. For example, we can have some circles spaced along the path. Or we can draw a path as a grid that fills the entire screen and then apply a shape to create interesting background patterns. There are three more arguments that we can pass in to tweak this further. First is advance. This determines the space between each stamp on the path. Second is the phase, which changes the starting point of the first stamp. As you can see, we can change this value to animate the stamps to move along the path. Third is the style of the stamp. To understand this, Let's change our stamp to be something with a clear direction, like an arrow. It looks weird with the arrows all facing one direction, whereas we might want them to orient themselves along the path. This is because we have set the style to translate, which simply moves the stamp to position. Changing the style to rotate will also rotate each stamp according to their current position on the path, while changing to morph will disfigure the stamp for it to align along the path. Next path effect is the dash path effect. This one's my favorite out of all of them. With this, we can apply dashes along the path to create a matching ants effect. We can set the length of the dash and space in a float array. This pattern will be repeated along the entire path. Like the stamped path effect, we can also set the phase, which changes the starting point of the effect. This is my favorite path effect, because if we know the length of the path, we can use this effect to animate it in like this. This is actually how I create the cycling animation I used to point out parts of this video. But we don't know yet how to measure the length of the path. That will be in the next section. Before we get to it, let's go over the last path effect, chain path effect. This takes in two path effects and combines them. The first one is applied first, then the second one after. No, 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 it's the other way around. To be honest, I find this a little confusing, especially when you have more than two path effects involved. To make this much easier, I created a helper class which applies the path effects from top to bottom. With this, we can apply multiple path effects similar to how we apply compose modifiers. Finally, let's see how we can measure a path and use that information to create animations. We will create a path measure object and set the path we would like to measure. If our path is closed, we will let it know with a boolean so that it can calculate correctly. Once set, we can simply get the length as a float. This length can be then used in a dash path effect to animate the path in and out. In the intervals float array, we can use the length multiplied by a float value that animates from 0 to 1. Other than the length, we can also get the position of any point on the path given a certain distance. With this position, we can animate an object along the path. Or we can loop through every position after a certain interval and draw an object. This is kind of like the stamped path effect from earlier, but way more customizable. With the stamped path effect, we were stuck with one size and color. But here, we can make the size of each stamp vary, or change the color of each object along the path. Let's get back to animating an object along the path. Earlier, we saw that objects with a clear direction might look weird when applied onto a winding path. The same applies here if we change our object to an arrow. 
To make this a little more natural, we would like to rotate the arrow based on the orientation of the path at its current position. Luckily, the path measure object also gives us the tangent of any point along the path. We can use this tangent to calculate the rotation at a particular position and apply that onto the object. Put this all together with a little creativity and we can create mesmerizing path animations. Check out the full source code in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.